Welcome. Fuck money. Fuck money. I need you. I need you to come. Come right in my way. Money. Fuck money. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Introducing from Atlantic City, New Jersey, weighing in at 210 pounds, your Italian hero, Joey Image. All right, before we get started, I want to thank wrestling superstar Virgil for singing part of our intro for me, and Mr. Scott Fletcher for the amazing introduction, which I hope will become a regular part of the show. So now... Let's talk about this. So Jared Fogel likes to fuck kids, huh? God, that's fucked up. I, that gives a new meaning to $5 footlongs. Um, so how are you, everybody? Welcome to episode three of the podcast, which is now named That Image Guy. I am your host, uh, That Image Guy. Um, I am Joey Image, and I appreciate all the feedback on the first two episodes um, I've gotten a lot of feedback. I've gotten a lot of people told me they've subscribed. I've gotten um, inquiries from two different people asking me to join their podcasting network, uh, one of which I've already agreed to join, and we'll talk about that more in the future. I can't really reveal a lot of that right now. Uh, the other I haven't heard back yet. I haven't heard back from yet, so I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Um, I've also been getting a lot of downloads on the YouTube. Um, when I first had this idea, I didn't know anything about um, RSS feeds or, or sending my, my podcast to iTunes or anything like that. Um, I've done podcasting a lot in the past, but I was essentially a show host. Uh, so I, what I would do is I would record the episodes and then hand them off to our producer or our sound engineer and they would do all the work, uh, as far as getting it submitted, getting it uploaded, um, you know, creating the, the, the banner picture, all that stuff. So I had nothing to do with any of that stuff. So I didn't really know what in the hell I was doing. So uh, just in the last couple of hours, I have <laughs> I've been so busy with with this podcast stuff, and it's super cool. And uh, I really think that uh, hopefully this will become something um, not necessarily huge, but uh, something that people can enjoy and listen to, and and you know when they're at work or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I hope you all like it. Send me any of your suggestions, of course. You can reach me at joeyimage at gmail.com. So, I don't really know what I want to talk about today, but uh, Jared Fogle seems to be the hot topic of uh, discussion this week because apparently he likes sex with kids. And according to a quote from him, the younger the girl, the better. Uh, so I guess uh, at least he's not racist, right? I mean, at least he's not like, hey, I only want to fuck white kids. You know what I mean? At least he's not like, don't send me any brown people. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to make a joke of it, but I realize it's not a funny situation. Um, I did see one uh, internet meme that said something. It was a picture of him, like, in front of a subway, I think it was. And it said uh, something to the effect of, uh, can I have something with the kids menu with extra kids? I'm, I am probably destroying that, that joke because I don't think I got it. But I don't know. I, I, whatever. Moving on. <laughs> anyway, so I woke up this morning and I had an email about, hey, we were wondering if you'd be interested in joining our podcast network. Um, got two of those. Uh, and then I've gotten a bunch of advice on Twitter. Thank you to Scott Johnson, uh, Ryan Murphy, uh, Mike Icewarm, a bunch of other people. Um, those are just the three names that I happen to remember right now uh, about helping me with, um, with uh, what's the word? Uh, stats, the, the podcast stats, how to, how to check out how many people subscribe to you and downloads and all that stuff. And apparently it's not easy. Um, and, and I know iTunes is simply the host for podcasts and, uh, basically I send them my MP3 and they post it for me and say, Hey, here's a new episode. And everyone that subscribes, it gets pushed to them automatically and they, it's an automatic download. But what I don't understand is iTunes being the most popular format and the most worldwide and well-known, widely recognized format, why would they not automatically 
provide stats, at least one stat, and just tell me how many people have subscribed via iTunes. Uh, that seems silly to me to not to not post that information. I mean, they don't even have to post it publicly. Just send me an email once a week saying, "Hey, you gained three subscribers this week, or you lost, you know, ten subscribers this week, whatever." Just give me a a, a number, um, because as far as I, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think my opinion is that the subscription numbers alone will let me know if this is even worth doing. Because, you know, if I start out with, hey, 20 of my friends subscribed, cool. Then they listen for three or four weeks. And then I'm like, hey, uh, you're down to eight subscribers now. 12 people, you know, took off. And then the next week, hey, you're up to 11 now. Like, hey, three people are in. Yeah, you know what? When I started at 20, now I'm down to 11 and then 10 and 8 and 5. And, you know, or if I'm up to 100 or whatever. It, it Basically, it, it, it I, I would think it would give me a gauge as to whether this is really even worth doing. Um, but whatever, I'm going to do it for myself anyway, and, and it's my, uh, I'm Italian, so I talk a lot. So this is a good way for me to kind of get it out. Uh, when there's no one to talk to, I talk to my microphone, uh, which some people ask me this morning what I use to record. Um, software-wise, I use Audacity, and hardware-wise, I have a Blue Yeti mic. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful microphone. My girlfriend got it for me. With, along with a pop filter and brand new JVC headset, uh, the headset is crystal clear. The um, the uh, mic is awesome. Everything works great. It all works great together, and everything sounds good. Uh, I'm not using the pop filter right now. Pop filter, pop filter. I don't know the difference. I'm not using it right now. I uh, disconnected it for because I had to move some stuff around here. But anyway, so what else the hell is going on? Um, I talked about, in my last episode, I talked a lot about Nerdtacular in Utah, and I mentioned a dude who I want to give a plug to because I mentioned his work, but didn't actually plug his website, which I should have. That was a, uh, that was a squeaking rubber chicken. Sorry. That's my mascot. He hangs out with me. Um, so if you heard my last episode, you heard me mention Joe Gates. He's the guy that makes the leather flasks. Uh, I wanted to plug his website because... His work is tremendous. If you need any, like, leather work done, um, you know, he does flash. He does, like, belt. Um, I almost, I, I want to call them leather fanny packs. Um, but I, I forget what it's actually called. But uh, he just, he does a lot of awesome work. So if you rip out your phone, your, your you know, hit, hit up Windows or, or your Mac or whatever, open your web browser and go to gatesofimagination.com. That is Joe Gates' website, and again, it's gatesofimagination.com. Um, you know, just Google, if you Google Gates of Imagination, you'll find it. Um, there's a ton of stuff on there. Like I said, he had sent me a flask. Uh, he was basically testing, um, you know, just just basically, I guess, the, the work. It was a, a, a prototype, I guess would be a good word for it, and uh, sent it to me. It looks awesome. Um, it's got my name on the front of it and the Tadpool logo, which is the group of fans that follow the Frog Pants podcasts, um, or the Frog Pants network that I, I spoke about last time. Um, so it's got that, my name on it, it's personalized, it looks really awesome. Um, so go on there, click on, on the top left, it says shop, click on that and it's got everything that he makes. Um, you know, like I said, he's got flasks, he's got, uh, belt pouches, um, belt bags. Uh, he's even got collapsible cups that go along with the flask, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, so check it out. Uh, he's got leather, um, leather cuffs too. Uh, dice cups. There's just so much stuff on here. Again, it's gatesofimagination.com. And then when you get on there on the top left, just click on shop. Um, I don't pick anything specific. I don't pick major spores or frog, pa- or frog pants. I just click on all items, and it shows everything. Um, so please check it out, and tell them Julian say thanks. So what else do we got? Um, I don't even know what else to talk about. You know, it's it's this is one of the problems I had when I decided to do this podcast. Uh, I didn't know if I would have anything to talk about, or if I would have too much to talk about, and the episodes would be like an hour or two hours long. Um, I want to keep everything 30 minutes to 45 minutes. I feel like shorter than that is like a waste. Why even bother? 
And longer than that, I don't think will hold people's attention long enough. I don't think I'm all that interesting. Um, but I, I wanted to be like not quite bite sized, but a little bit bigger than that. And this is still kind of new to me. Um, as I said, I used to just do the recording and then the, the producer slash engineer would do everything else. So now I'm doing everything myself and, uh, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I had to sign up for blue baby or something like that this morning. Uh, the website's like blubbby.com or something. I don't know, but they're like a stats service where you plug in your RSS feed number and they'll let you know how many downloads and, and, uh, all that kind of stuff. All the, the stats, it's very detailed stuff, but stuff that, uh, again, as I also said earlier, I feel like iTunes should already be doing for podcasters and can't understand why they wouldn't. Um, but yeah, I signed up for that. I, uh, I, I put everything on SoundCloud, um, a couple of days ago in order to get the RSS feed link for iTunes to pull the podcast and the new episodes from. So I did that. Uh, so now I'm on SoundCloud. I'm on blue BBBBY, whatever the hell that is again. Um, I'm on iTunes now. Just search for under podcasters for that image guy. Um, so there's a, a few different outlets you can use to find me. I'm also going to continue uploading these episodes to my YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash Joey Image. Uh, it's more content for the channel, obviously. I mean, anything I do that I can go on, that I can put up there is more content. Um, and there's a really cool uh, video intro um, that, that starts out all my podcasts, and it's made by Corey Kekazagos. Or something. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's something with a K and a Z and an S. Um, you can look him up on Twitter at Cuddly Corey. Uh, I think it's with a E Y C U D D L E Y. There's another one that's Cuddly Corey that's not got an E and it's a different dude. Uh, but anyway, um, so he made a really cool video intro that you'll see on my YouTube. And again, this is just more content. Um, my YouTube has unboxing videos. I do product reviews. I do um, I don't know what else <laughs> product reviews and unboxings and, and some wrestling really is really what's all that's on there. And according, I mean, uh, uh, as I said, these, uh, podcast episodes, which are audio obviously, and YouTube, as we know, is a video website, but, uh, I put the video intro before it. And then I just put like a picture so you can still listen to it while, uh, you're on YouTube. Um, what else, man? Jeez, what else should I talk about? The other, you know what? Let me, as as I'm on the topic of YouTube, uh, let me thank Satachi, which is S-A-T-E-C-H-I, which sounds like Sateki to me, but it's not. Um, Satachi is a company that I've been a customer of for a long time before I started working with them. Um, so now they send me, uh, I, I originally bought an FM transmitter, and a uh, mount for my car, for my iPhone. So I have my, uh, the mount is uh, suction cup to my windshield. The, um, what's it called? The FM transmitter, it works via Bluetooth, so it's not, there's no, like, with a standard FM transmitter, you get a lot of static, obviously, because you're driving around, so you're picking up different FM signals. And depending on what station you use to plug into, there's there could be one city you're driving through that, that is an actual station. So you're going to lose your connection to your phone or your streaming device, whatever you're using, your phone, your iPad, uh, your tablet, whatever. iPad. That sounded weird, right? So... Um, anyway, so this one is Bluetooth. It's not, does not rely on the, it obviously relies on the FM signal, but it connects to the phone via Bluetooth. So I have never had any static and I've used, this is probably the third or fourth FM transmitter I've used in my car since I started doing that. And this was the first one with no static. Uh, and I'm assuming because it's Bluetooth and Bluetooth is rated for like 30 feet away. Um, the connection and this is, I don't know, a foot. Maybe a foot and a half. I mean, I don't know. So it plugs right in your cigarette lighter, the actual transmitter itself, and then your phone, or I'm sorry, the receiver, your phone being the transmitter, um, and the Bluetooth receiver plugs right into the cigarette um, port. So uh, it connects that way, and, and again, it's mounted to my windshield. So everything is fine. Um, it works perfect. I don't have any static. So that was the first item, first two items I bought from them. 
and uh, I had never heard of them before that, but I saw a YouTube video of that particular item. So I bought I bought that, and then I ended up buying uh, like a keyboard a couple years later, and, and I think that might be it. And then I emailed them randomly and said, "Hey," uh, and I did reviews for for a couple of items um, on Amazon, and uh, I sent them an email saying, "Like, hey, do you guys do um, free? Do you guys send free stuff to people for testing purposes, uh, testing slash review purposes?" and they were like, absolutely. You know, we, we always send out like a certain amount of items, like they'll mass produce whatever, 100,000 uh, keyboards, and they'll say, all right, we're going to send out 100 just to testers for people to product test these and do our, you know, let us know how they work and give us a review and use them in real world situations and blah, blah, blah. It's essentially beta testing, but with actual hardware instead of software. So I emailed them that. And they sent me back a response saying, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we want a minimum amount of uh, YouTube viewers or subscriptions and Twitter handlers, or handlers, Twitter followers, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm a lot of, uh, I'm flubbing a lot of words here and I'm saying um a lot and I'm just leaving it in. Screw editing. Uh, this is just the real me. I don't want to edit stuff because then it sounds too perfect. But anyway, so they responded. They said, yeah, I have enough Twitter followers and I have enough YouTube subscribers. And I don't even have that many YouTube subscribers. I just hit like 603 this morning. And this was probably four or five months ago where I had like maybe 100. So I don't know what their uh, minimum YouTube subscriber count is, but it somehow I, I managed to hit it. So they started sending me free stuff. And uh, I do video reviews for them. I do Amazon reviews for them. Um since I've started working with Satachi, uh, I've gotten, um, again, this is all free stuff. I just, the catch is I have to do reviews for them and I agree to do them within a week or two. So I try my hardest. I've only had one, uh, one mishap where I wasn't able to do that. But since, uh, since I started working with them of, uh, they've sent me a, uh, four port USB hub for some reason, they sent me two of them. So I used one for a giveaway, uh, and you can you can find all these reviews on my YouTube channel. Um, they've sent me a, a four port USB hub uh, with a clamp on it, which is really cool. Clamps right to the side or the bottom or top of your monitor. Super convenient. Um, I've gotten a, a desk uh, monitor stand, also with four USB ports in it. Um, I have. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a plane flying by outside. That's kind of loud. So I've got that. Um, or those two items that sent me a, a docking station for a, a hard drive, uh, serial ATA, and it can be an SSD or a spinning drive, and it's got a huge slot in the front for a dock, obviously. So I plugged that in, and it, oops, plugged it in, and now it becomes an external drive, and it's also got two USB ports and a card reader on the front of it. Uh, there's no video for that yet. I will be doing one soon. Um, I, I had already recorded it, but when I had my Windows 10 debacle, I lost that video. I also lost the video for the IQ power strip, um, which is a lighting strip where it basically controls, it's, it's light that is controlled via Bluetooth. So it's all different colors and it's got disco modes. When there's music on it, it, you know, changes to the beat and stuff. It's a really, really cool product. You can check that out on their website. Uh, again, I lost that video as well when I had my uh, Windows 10 debacle. And while I'm on the subject of Windows 10, let's talk about that. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, like everyone else, got the little pop-up in the bottom right by the clock from Microsoft with the little Windows logo saying, Upgrade to Windows 10, you know, reserve now, and it'll be released July 29th, and we'll let you know when you're ready. So I, of course, observed, um, I'm sorry, I, of course, subscribed. What a, observed? What the hell would that even mean? I watched the, the icon? Anyway, I subscribed to it, I got the, um... Okay, you're good. We'll let you know July 29th or later when you're good to go. Uh, July 29th came and went. I wasn't here. I was at Nerdtacular. When I got back, I still had the icon, but I had not yet been um, invited to download and upgrade. So Tom Merritt um, at Ace Detect. Uh, by the way, a little side note. It's A-C-E-D-T-E-C-T -E -E on Twitter. I had no idea how to pronounce that for the longest time until I heard Scott Johnson say it. Anyway, follow Tom. He's an amazing, amazing dude. Uh, tech tech expert. Um, I want to say tech pundit, but I don't know what word what the word pundit means, so I won't say it. 
Uh, but he's definitely a tech expert. DTNS Daily Tech News Show. Please check that out on Alpha Geek Radio as well as DailyTechNewsShow.com. Anyway, uh, back to my lovely Microsoft and Windows 10 story. So I didn't get it, but the invite, I mean, but I, but Tom posted a link saying, hey, you can download the ISOs right here and upgrade this way. So I did that. Um, I did the download. I downloaded it to a USB stick. I've got an 8 gig here. I bought a Micro Center for 4 bucks. Threw it on that. Um, the requirements were something like uh, needs to be at least a 4 gig stick. So again, 8 gig worked fine. Um, so I did the download. I attempted to do the upgrade. Uh, and that's where it gets tricky. Um, I've heard of people that posted videos of the upgrade and posts on Facebook and stuff saying when you actually do the upgrade, it'll restart a few times during um, the initial like reading Windows files uh, install off the off the CD, the thumb drive, whatever you use. So I thought, okay, no problem. So my girlfriend came over that night. We were watching TV. I was I had uh, I was sitting in front of my computer doing the upgrade. It got to twenty six percent, and I know also via people's Facebook video Facebook um, posts and YouTube videos that not only does it restart a bunch of times, but it also at some point it'll hang. It'll get to, for example, five percent, and then it'll hang for you know two or three minutes, and then it'll go to six percent, or it'll jump to ten percent or whatever. So I know it's not a seamless like flawless experience. So basically, uh, mine got to 26% and it hung there for about three or four minutes. So I figured, all right, it's going, it's going to stop at 26% for a while. It'll do whatever it does for hopefully three or four minutes and it'll jump to 27. So I turn off my monitor, lay in bed on my girlfriend watching TV. Uh, I forget what we watched, but it was a two hour show. I came back two hours. Uh, it was on the, um, actually, I'm sorry. I waited for the 26% to jump. It never did. But that was when the first restart happened at 26. So it told me restarting. Um, you know, your computer will restart several times during this upgrade, blah, blah, blah. Restarting now. So that's when it went to the restart screen. That's when it was on that screen about a minute and a half, two minutes. So I turned off my monitor and I went, you know, went and laid in bed with my girlfriend watching TV. Whatever we watched, again, it was a two-hour show, I forget. Uh, it may have been... Uh, the Jack Rebney show, the um, the Winnebago Man, which is an amazing documentary about Jack Rebney. Check it out. It's on Netflix. It's called The Winnebago Man or just Winnebago Man. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole other story, but it's a great, great documentary. But anyway, so after the two hours of that was over, uh, I turned the monitor back on to see where we're at, and we're still on the restarting screen. So I post on Twitter to Microsoft, and I say, hey, this thing's a piece of shit. Why am I still on this screen after two hours? And of course, Microsoft doesn't answer, uh, but Windows at Windows Support answers, and they say, "Please DM us so we can contact you regarding this." Here's a, a, a thing I don't understand: they're contacting me to tell me that they want to contact me. You just contacted me. You fucking tweeted me, so just tweet me. I don't understand why you need me to DM you. I, I'm the same person. It's the same issue. You obviously just read the issue. Why don't you DM me a response to the issue instead of saying, "Can you DM us and we can talk to you about this?" Why you just you just contacted me? I, I, you don't need to contact me to ask me how to contact me. You just contacted me. Or if you click on my name, my email address is right in my profile. Just just do that. But anyway, um, so I say uh, you know whatever I post that, and then uh, some people are like, "Oh, you can just restart it on your own, and it'll resume." So I hit the reset button on my PC. It restarts. It goes back to the 26% screen. It says Windows needs to restart. I guess because it never finished its own restart a couple minutes prior. Or two hours prior, I should say. So I hit restart again. Uh, and it does the same thing. You know, shuts down, restarts, gets back up. And now it's not doing anything. I'm getting uh, something about... Uh, and this At this point, this was like two weeks ago now. So I'm trying to remember what exactly the error message was. Um, it was something about, uh, could not find, uh, and I, I forget what it said, but uh, I think what I got was the uh, the famous something happened message, which uh, if you watch David DeFranco's videos, he got that message twice uh, while upgrading to Windows 10 on his HP Stream 11. So I think I got that. Something happened. Well, that was the exact error message. So I want to know what happened. It can't tell me. So I restart again. Nothing happens. 
it gets to a certain point and it just can't go any further. And I, I hate to not be descriptive on that, but again, this is like two weeks ago now, and I really forget what happened. Uh, I'm going to have to go back in my Twitter feed and find it because I complained a lot about it. Um, I actually posted a picture. but um, So I got past the uh, the restart screen, I thought, Restarted on my own, didn't do anything, went back in. I remember getting a black screen as well for for, uh, some time there. And uh, I eventually just gave up. And I tried to go back to Windows 7. Uh, I'm on Windows 7 now. I never got 8 or 8.1 because, to me, the tiles are very, very uh, more touchscreen friendly than uh, mouse and keyboard friendly. And I don't have a touchscreen, nor do I really have a need for one other than my phone and my iPad. So I don't really care about having a touchscreen phone. Uh, I'm sorry, a touchscreen PC monitor. So, you know, that doesn't really concern me. So I never went to 8 or 8.1. But what I did do was attempt to revert back to Windows 7. So it actually let me in to Windows 10 eventually. I kept upgrading. I mean, I kept resetting, resetting. Finally, it got into Windows 10. And there were a whole bunch of drivers that didn't work. So I couldn't get my... I know there's been a big, big problem with NVIDIA drivers on Windows 10. And I've got an NVIDIA GTX 760. So that wouldn't work. So my screen was all, you know, screwy. Um, that didn't work. My hard, my hard drive that I had Windows on initially... Actually, I'm sorry. Before I, I got 10 to upgrade, uh, it wouldn't let me install Windows 7. As I said earlier, I started to talk about that. And then I got sidetracked. Uh, I started to install Windows 7. Wouldn't let me. It made me format the drive before I could reinstall Windows. So I did that. It made me format the drive, and then it went right to 10. I wanted to format it, go back to 7, and leave it like that. But it wouldn't let me do that because I, I am assuming because I had the USB stick plugged in, and it was reading off of that. So I formatted the drive. It got rid of everything. Then it installed 10. And again, this is off the ISO from the USB stick, uh, I never actually got the official, quote-unquote, official invite from uh, Microsoft to do the upgrade. So, uh, after I did that, after it installed, again, it, it installed, it did fully install. There were things that didn't work. NVIDIA obviously didn't work. My hard drive was blank. I couldn't reach another two or three of my hard drive. I have 12 hard drives total. Um, I couldn't reach, oh God, like two or three of them. So, I only had, I think I had nine in if you go into a uh, Windows Explorer or my computer, I believe I had nine. So that those didn't work. I also had three things that were popping up, and coincidentally, I was missing three hard drives. But I would get three pop-ups at the bottom right during boot up that said USB device not recognized. So that essentially, what I found out was um, a few months ago I had bought a separate USB controller card, uh, plugs in PCI Express. It's got two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, it's basically plug and play. You plug it in your go, you got two extra ports. Windows 10 effectively didn't actually kill my a second hard drive, which I thought it did. What it did was it killed that controller card. So anything I plugged in there didn't work. I didn't know that. I, I initially thought that it killed a second hard drive, but it didn't. So I ended up formatting. Uh, like I said, format, did the upgrade, a lot of stuff didn't work. I gave up. Uh, I went back in. To, I And I had used the ISO again to do the startup repair utility. Didn't work. I would put in the Windows 7 disk to do that startup repair utility. That didn't work. I tried to fix the MBR, which is master boot record. That wouldn't work. I couldn't do anything. So I had to open up my PC case and physically unplug the hard drive that I had installed Windows 10 onto in order to do the Windows 7 reinstall, which is just insane to me. Um, the, the biggest, uh, I think the most insane part of this whole debacle is the fact that, uh, I'm 38 years old. I've been a tech guy slash PC or computer guy for over 30 years. I got my first computer. I was five years old. It was a Commodore 64. I've just been obsessed with tech and computing and, and, and hard drives and everything, everything computer related since then. Um, I keep up with latest, you know, the latest trends, new products coming out, stuff like that. Um, so for 30 plus 30 plus years, I just said 30 plus 30 years, that would be 60. But for 30 plus years is what I'm trying to say. Um, I've been into technology and keeping track of computers and computer advances and things like that. So it, it absolutely drove me nuts in the first place that I couldn't figure this out. 
So just based on my own, I don't know, pride slash ego. So that didn't work. I had to unplug the drive. I unplug it. I pop in the Windows 7 CD. I get Windows 7 installed on a drive I had that was already blank. Um, I've got three hard drive, or I've got 12 hard drives, but I've got three right now that are blank. Uh, at the time, there was only one, uh, there was only two, two blank, I believe. The uh, third one that's now blank was a, I'm sorry, there was one blank. The other two are as a result of Windows 10. So I do that. I get Windows 7 reinstalled. I don't install, I do all the Windows updates for chipset drivers, NVIDIA drivers, all that stuff. I give it like a day. Everything's fine. So I decide, you know what? I'm going to give Windows 10 one more shot. And what changed my mind, what made me decide to give Windows 10 one more shot was that I had now received, when I reinstalled Windows 7, I had now received the official invite from Microsoft that pops up in the bottom right of the taskbar by the clock and says, hey, upgrade now, upgrade now, it's free. So I said, you know what, Uh, I, I understand that it's basically the same ISO, it doesn't really matter whether I get it from them or I download the ISO manually. But in my head, the fact that I had done it myself manually versus now receiving this official um, download from Microsoft, you know, in my head, that made the difference. Even though I know it really doesn't, the, the perception is that that matters. So that's what I did. So I updated Windows 10 via the official um, invite. This time, it upgraded without a problem. It took about 20 minutes, did the upgrade, booted into Windows 10. Uh, Everything looked, seemed fine. However, now I would get random freezes. I would be typing something and something would freeze. The whole PC would freeze. Or I would click to open a window and it just wouldn't open. I would double click to open, like, for example, my computer. And it simply would not open. It would just ignore me. I would wait 5 or 10 minutes and double click it again. It would open fine without a problem. It would only open once. It's not like I clicked on it, you know, double clicked once. It didn't open. Then I double clicked again and it opened twice, once from the previous attempt. It just wouldn't open. It would open the second time though. So, and again, the as I mentioned, the NVIDIA drivers were were not a uh, uh, friendly, <laughs> not Windows 10 friendly at the time. Uh, I've been told there's been an update since then, but again, this was uh, a week or two ago, so probably about a week and a half now. So uh, I never, um, I didn't even bother looking for an update to that, but um, that worked. It went in, it went fine, and then slowly things started to break down. And I actually, I physically plugged in both of the other two drives that didn't work. Uh, One of them I had formatted, so that was now blank. The second one just wouldn't read. It would keep giving me 11 hard drives. It would just not read the second one. So um, basically, uh, it it just sucked. I mean, it, it bricked one hard drive. It almost, I thought at the time that it bricked another. Um, there were a lot of drivers that, that weren't yet working. Uh, it was very much a alpha. I mean, I wouldn't even call this a beta release. I would call this an alpha release. Um, not something that you want to, uh, you know, not something that you want to, um, uh, what's the word? You want to roll out to millions of users, especially some that are going to be in a corporate environment that are using this. You know, unless you send a warning saying, hey, if you have anything important that you that you want to keep, don't do this upgrade. Or put all that stuff on Dropbox you can download it later as I know Veronica Belmont did um you know or how about just don't even bother with this it's garbage you know give us a year before we have all bugs worked out or six months before we've got all the bugs worked out then do it so that's really what they should have done um so anyway I did all that and it was just times it would be slow I would click on Microsoft Edge because I wanted to try their new web browser. I would click on it. It wouldn't open for almost three to four minutes. I mean, just really, really ridiculous. And it's not like I don't have enough, enough, uh, you know, a strong enough computer. I mean, I'm running 3.5 gigahertz uh, quad-core processor. I've got 32 gigs of RAM. If Microsoft Edge's, I mean, I'm sorry, if Microsoft's browser Edge cannot load in 32 gigs of RAM, within, you know, five to ten seconds of being clicked on, and even that is a long time, then, Jesus Christ, uh, you know, it's not worth using, in my opinion. So, I let that shit go. I gave it about a day and a half, two days. I poked around a little bit, played around. Um, Did not like what I saw. Again, way too many errors, too many delays, too many restarts. That's another thing. There were so many times where I would click on something and and it would freeze the whole system. I just had to eventually restart the whole machine 
I mean, I'm talking three or four times in an hour. And, and you know, at that point, that's just too much. And I, I'm going to have to stop this soon because I, I don't know if you can hear my voice. a little bit uh, scratchy. Uh, I've got a bit of a sore throat. I think I'm either coming down with something or I'm just getting over something. But, uh, but my, my throat is kind of scratchy. My voice sounds a little bit uh, shitty. Um, but anyway, so just to continue the story, I'll, I'll wrap this up here. And then uh, I will let you go and send you on your way to anticipate my next episode. Um, so essentially what happened was I got rid of Windows 10 again. Uh, I had to, I used the drive that, that it was already on. So I reformatted the existing system drive, reinstalled Windows 7, did all the Windows updates, updated all my games. Uh, I'm sorry, reinstalled all my games, my apps, my Audacity, everything that I, that I need that I use. And now I have zero problems, no issues at all in Windows 7. And as I, as I touched on earlier, I had bought a PCI Express 2-port USB 3.0 controller that simply plugs into your motherboard and there's two extra ports. Now, Windows 10 didn't like this. I assumed, because the one of the hard drives that I didn't, uh, that couldn't read was plugged into this. So I just assumed, oh, it killed this hard drive too. Not true, because when I plugged it back into Windows 7, I got USB device not recognized. Now, first of all, I should tell you this. It worked flawlessly in Windows 7 for the past, I don't know, four or five months that I've had this. Anything I plugged into that controller card worked without issue. I plug in Windows 10. Windows 10 doesn't like it. I uninstall Windows 10 and reinstall Windows 7. Suddenly, Windows 7 can't read it either. So, to me, that means... Windows 10 tried to read something on that drive, didn't like it, and said, F this drive, I'm going to kill it, uh, I'm going to kill the controller card at least, I'll let the drive live. So, essentially, I had to pull that controller card out, and I'm no longer getting the USB device not recognized error from Windows 7 anymore, and luckily I had another port. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, Satachi sent me a couple of items that, uh, that have USB hubs on them, so I still have another port where it's plugged into now and it's all good. But the fact that Windows 10 not only bricked, essentially bricked two hard drives that I was able to recover via a format, but it also killed that controller card, which I didn't realize this until yesterday. Today is August 20th. Um, I had, and as I said, this was about two weeks ago. So I had just been without that drive for about two weeks. Uh, I, I eventually plugged it in somewhere else to see, just on a whim, like, hey, I wonder if this would work this way. And I plugged it in and it worked. So I plugged it back into the controller card and I got nothing. So I, I uh, essentially, I got rid of that controller card and now it's good. Um, so please, if you want to, uh, if you're on Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1 um, or XP, I have an XP computer also that I got the, <laughs> this is stupid, speaking of Windows 10, I, I'm, I have a Windows XP computer, which I will be, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm configuring right now to be my Plex uh, server. So, <laughs> Windows XP is on it. I I get the little icon on the bottom right that says, you can upgrade this computer to Windows 10 for free. So I think uh, there's no way that this hardware can support Windows 10. So I click on the thing. It says, click here to do a compatibility check. So I click on the compatibility check. And as I said, <laughs> this CPU and this hardware cannot support Windows 10. Why? Then you should test that now. Or you should test that and then before I'm getting the invitation to upgrade. Or at least, you know, I understand they send that they roll out those invitations to millions of people at a time. So they're not probably not checking every system or at any at all. So I do the compatibility check. But after it tells me I can't support it, why is the icon still there? Get rid of it. You just told me I can't use it. So why are you bothering me? Anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap this up here. I just do have a, a, a three words, quick words of advice. Don't install Windows 10. That's four words. Um, but I should I should actually uh, backpedal on that claim because I will probably in a few weeks maybe give Windows 10 a third chance, hoping that three times the charm. I, I gave them two chances right now uh, so far, and they fucked me both times. So I'm hoping third time will be the charm, but the key is I'm going to do it on a brand new clean hard drive. 
not an upgrade from Windows 7. I'm going to try to do it as a clean install. I know I may have issues with the product key, but I'm not really concerned about that right now. I just want to see if it'll upgrade and handle all my stuff. So, I will let you know how that goes. Um, or, who knows, by then I may change my mind and decide to not do it. But, I will let you know how that goes, and of course I will be back. And let me know if you have had any Windows 10 issues. If you follow my Twitter, you probably saw me trying to help Veronica Belmont, who also had Windows 10 issues. Um, I mean, she had some major issues, just like I did. She had to log in with Ubuntu and and copy her uh, game save files to Dropbox. Otherwise, she would have lost that as well. But that's a whole other story for another day, and I'm sure she'll tell it. But, again, uh, check me out on Twitter. You can check out her Twitter at at Veronica. Check me out at Joey Image on Twitter. Uh, Joey Image at gmail.com. Uh, again, as I said earlier, I will be joining a new podcast network, which I will be talking about in my next episode. So I hope you guys will look out for that. Check me out on iTunes. Go to iTunes Store podcast section and search for That Image Guy. Uh, my YouTube.com slash Joey Image channel is, going, is doing well. I'm um, getting more subscribers daily, which is pretty awesome. You can check me out there as well. And again, product reviews, unboxings, podcasts, whole bunch of stuff on there, as well as a couple of other podcasts that I'm a part of, and I will talk about all that in my next episode. I want to thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm sorry if it went a little bit long. I just had to rant about Windows and Microsoft. I will talk to you soon. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you in my next episode. Thanks. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey, you little dudes, try and say your prayers need your vitamins. Oh, Yay! Hulk Hogan Vitamins, the new champion of children's chewables. Mmm, candy. And I'm not gaining weight. I'm losing weight deliciously with the aid of AIDS. The AIDS diet plan really works. AIDS candy contains a safe and effective appetite suppressant when used as directed. Helps curb your appetite so you can lose weight. And AIDS candy has no stimulant that can make you nervous. The plan lets you enjoy two AIDS before each meal. Mmm, delicious chocolate flavor. And I love being a size 10 again. Lose weight deliciously with the aid of AIDS.